Today I'm going to show you how to put together a fun and festive holiday waffle bar with an array of delicious toppings that your family and friends can use to build their own waffle. I'm Whitney from SweetCayenne.com and what I love about this waffle bar is that both of the batters can be made up to a day ahead along with a few homemade toppings so that on Christmas morning everything's ready to set out and your guests can help themselves. The first waffle batter we're going to make is a brown butter pumpkin spice waffle, which is just delicious. I love all the warm flavors in here and it's so easy to make. So I'm only making half a recipe today, but a full recipe would make a total of eight waffles in a standard Belgian waffle maker, which is what I have right here. So we're going to start off with one cup of buttermilk and just pour that into a large bowl. And then I have some beaten eggs right here that I just whisked together. And then to do that, we will add some packed pumpkin. This is just pure pumpkin puree from the can, um, but of course you could make your own. So I'll just use a spatula to make sure we get every bit of that out and into the bowl. All right, and then we have some brown butter that I've already browned. And that's just a matter of cooking butter in a skillet until the milk solids get toasty and caramelized. And this just adds a delicious depth of flavor to the waffle batter that's unlike anything you've ever tasted. It just adds a nice, festive, rich flavor to our waffle batter. And then the last liquid ingredient we will add is some vanilla extract. And then once all of our liquid ingredients are in there, we'll just give them a quick whisk to incorporate them all together until the mixture is nice and smooth. So once the liquid ingredients are all combined, we will add our dry. And for this waffle batter, I am using a white whole wheat flour just for some extra fiber and protein. You could use all-purpose flour, of course, but I like the nutty richness that a white whole wheat flour gives to this recipe. And fun little fact, I actually ground this flour myself. I order whole um, wheat kernels and grind the flour fresh, and it just has the most incredible flavor, and it makes me feel like I'm adding nutrition to something that's kind of indulgent. And so then to that, we'll add some light brown sugar, just for a slight amount of sweetness. And then here I've already measured out my baking soda, baking powder, and some salt. And then the last dry ingredient we will need are, of course, those delicious warm spices that we associate with the pumpkin spice flavor. I've got some cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and cloves. And then I'll give that a whisk. So it's all combined, being careful not to overmix so that our waffle batter isn't tough. So if you really want to make this make-ahead waffle batter easy and convenient, you'll make it up to a day ahead and then I like to go ahead and portion it out into cups so that the next morning the waffle batter is already pre-portioned and your guests can just pour it straight onto the heated waffle iron. So of course you could use ramekins for this, but I like to use these disposable cups. This is a four ounce disposable, they call it snack cups. I think solo snack cups, and they come with a little lid, and so you can just pop the lid on top. But this is exactly the amount of waffle batter that you need to make one waffle in a Belgian waffle iron. So the proportion works out perfectly. So I just like to ladle it in there up to the very top, just like so. And then I will pop the lid on and refrigerate these overnight, which makes it so easy and convenient. And now we'll move on to the other waffle batter recipe. The second type of waffle batter we're going to make is a delicious chocolate waffle that has bits of dried cranberries and white chocolate chips folded into the batter. So we're going to start off with the dry ingredients for this one and I'm going to measure one cup of my white whole wheat flour here that I used in the pumpkin batter. So I'll just scoop out one cup and then level it off with my knife. All right, and then to that, we're going to add some cocoa powder. It is a good quality cocoa powder. And then we'll add brown sugar for a slight amount of sweetness. And then I've 
pre-measured out my baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Then I'm just going to use a fork to mix all of that together until it's well combined. And it's already starting to smell really good from that cocoa powder. These are very chocolatey waffles. So if you have chocolate lovers in your house, they're going to be thrilled with these. All right, that looks good. And then once it's mixed, you'll create a well in the center and that's where we're going to add our liquid ingredients. To the flour mixture, you'll add your buttermilk followed by some melted butter, beaten egg yolks, and then some vanilla. And you'll use your fork to whisk the liquid mixture in the middle and then bring the flour mixture from the sides into the center. And once it starts to be well combined, I like to use a rubber spatula to fold in any remaining flour bits so that I don't overmix the dough. Then you'll use the two egg whites and whip them until soft peaks form. Carefully add the egg whites to the chocolate waffle batter and start to gently fold them in. So folding these whipped egg whites into a chocolate waffle batter really helps to aerate the batter and lighten it up so that you don't end up with a dense waffle. So once the egg whites are gently folded in and you no longer see streaks of white in the batter. Then we're going to fold in a little bit of finely chopped white chocolate chips and dried cranberry. So this just adds a nice texture to the waffle and a little bit of sour and sweet, which I like. If you don't want these in your waffle batter, they make for a great topping on the waffle bar. So I'm just gonna fold in just a little bit, about a quarter cup of the combination and fold those in lightly and it also adds kind of a pretty color to the waffle batter and I just love the flavor combination of white chocolate and cranberry in a deep chocolate uh, baked good. So then just like the last batter we will scoop the chocolate waffle batter into these cups so that they're ready to go on Christmas morning or whenever we want to serve them over the course of the holidays. All right, I've got my waffle bar tray over here all set up and ready to go along with extra batter that I just haven't portioned out yet. So let me show you a little bit about what I have right here, a few homemade toppings. So I've got my pumpkin spice waffle batter, my chocolate waffle batter, some warm maple syrup, and then I did four homemade toppings that I made the day before and just heated up or brought to room temperature today. So I've got some cinnamon pears right here that I just sauteed in a little bit of butter so they were soft and tender and then added brown sugar and cinnamon. Very simple and I'll have those instructions for you in the description box below. And then I have some sweet and salty candied bacon mix. I just baked the bacon in the oven with a little brown sugar sprinkled on top and then when it was crispy and caramelized, I chopped it up. And then here I have some homemade cranberry applesauce, which is delicious on both flavors of the waffles. If you wanted to save time, you could of course use pre-made cranberry sauce. And then I have extra sprinkles of that white chocolate cranberry mixture right here. So of course there's tons of other things you could add for your toppings. You could do some toasted chopped nuts, maybe some Nutella if people wanted a double chocolate waffle, cookie butter would be great, whipped cream, really you can make this as elaborate or as simple as you like. So now I'm going to make my waffle and since I can't decide between the two flavors, I'm going to do half and half of each. I have preheated my waffle maker according to the manufacturer's instructions and sprayed it with a little bit of cooking oil. And so now I'm just going to ladle half of it with the chocolate batter and then half with the pumpkin spice so that I can have the best of both worlds. And already it is smelling absolutely amazing. And I will link my exact waffle maker in the description box for you below. I got this um, as part of my wedding registry when I got married and I've had it for about seven years now and it has been 
absolutely incredible. I love it and will totally repurchase it if need be. And I think they make a double one too, where you can make two waffles at one time. So what I recommend is you can either let people serve themselves or you can have a designated waffle maker, someone who is putting the batter into the iron and giving people their waffle once it's done. It's up to you. Um, and also, if you can ask a family or a friend to build, bring an extra waffle iron, it's nice to have two heated up and going at the same time to keep the line moving through. So we're just going to wait until the timer goes off and then we'll top our waffle. I've got my waffle loaded up just the way I like it and I'm ready to dig in. I'm so excited about this. It's the perfect Christmas morning breakfast to fuel you up for a day of opening presents. And I'm gonna dig in with a chocolate waffle and a little bit of cranberry sauce. Wow, it's so chocolatey, light and tender. And the cranberry sauce adds a little bit of tanginess. Now I'll go in for the pumpkin spice with a little bit of pear and candied bacon. These really are the most delicious toppings and they make waffles extra special for the holidays. Mmm. I can taste the brown butter and the saltiness of the bacon pieces and the cinnamon and the pear, which is so good and so festive. I really hope you get a chance to try this make ahead holiday waffle bar. You're going to be amazed at how easy it is to whip up these together the day before and set them out for your family and friends the next morning. They're absolutely gonna love it. If you're in search of some more festive breakfast recipes, I will link my breakfast playlist for you over here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below telling me about one of your favorite holiday traditions. I would love to know about it. Thank you again, and I will see you in the next video.